Hi guys, it's Chrissy and welcome back to another blog post reading slash thoughts video kind of thing. And yeah, I haven't done one of these in a while, so today they actually released another blog post about Del Sol Valley. And yeah, it's not all that long or anything, but I thought we'd go through it. And since I haven't really mentioned my thoughts on, you know, on Del Sol Valley in general over here on my channel, I just talked about it a little bit on Twitter, but if you don't follow me on there, you obviously won't know what I said or what my opinions are or anything. So I thought I would just talk about that in this video as well. But first off, let's read through the blog post and see what it says. So it's The Sims 4 Get Famous Del Sol Valley. It's the world of glitz and glamour. The Sims 4 Get Famous expansion packs arrive th arrives this month. So we're giving you the inside scoop on Del Sol Valley, the brand new world. We'll be sharing details of each neighborhood soon, but in the meantime, here's an overview of what you can expect from this glitzy world that packs some major star quality. And yeah, so it just talks about all three of the neighborhoods, not in detail or anything, just a brief overview. So Mirage Park, care for a star to home up and coming sim. This is the place where aspiring artists build their careers, make connections and hone their skills. Move your sim into a reasonably, pr reasonably pl priced abode and, well, start booking gigs. S Starlight Boulevard. This is where all of Del Sol Valley comes to see and be seen. Here you can spot celebrities, walk the famous boule boulevard and try to get past the bouncer at the town's hottest nightclub. Pro tip. Try and convince them you belong inside. It might just work. The Pinnacles. Ah, your sim has finally made it big. Well, it's time for an upgrade, which means they're, head they're headed for the Pinnacles. It's an A-list only neighborhood where celebs retreat from the hustle and bustle of their, fa of their fabulous lives. But beware, a bigger house doesn't always equal privacy from the cameras. Don't miss our upcoming live stream on the November the 9th, 2018, where you can learn even more about Del Sol Valley. So, this is, but that's basically the whole blog post. But, since they didn't talk too much about, in, go too in detail about the you know, neighborhoods or anything like that, I thought I would use, you know, this time, the rest of this video, to talk a bit more about what I think personally about the world. Now, I know that when... All of, this, all of the game changers that went to Sims Camp, you know, obviously they shared their videos, I think it was like maybe two weeks ago or something, that when, they, when their embargo left, they shared some stuff, and everyone's reaction when it came to Del Sol Valley was basically that everyone didn't, people didn't hate the world, I just saw a lot of people, you know, saying very negative things about it, about its size, and saying that there's so much empty space on the map that it's kind of like a waste of space and stuff like that but you know to a degree i kind of agree but yeah i'm basically i'm really sad that there are only 11 lots in the whole world and that only two there's only like two residential neighborhoods obviously you have mirage park and the Pinnacles, and then you have Starlight Boulevard, but Starlight Boulevard is more like a, you know, not a residential, you know, neighborhood. It's more like a community neighborhood where, you know, you have all your community lots and stuff. So basically, there's 11 lots. Six of those are kind of meant to be residential lots, and then five of them are meant to be more community lots. But yeah, that's basically the whole world. And then there's obviously the hidden you know, camera, not camera studio, but the hidden movie studio where your sim goes to work. But that's not something you can obviously live on or really build on or anything like that. So I don't really count that lot. But yeah, so I am really sad that it is such a small world. I think, you know, compared to even Brindleton Bay, I think Brindleton Bay had either 13 or 16 lots. I'm not, I can't really remember exactly. But yeah, it had between 13 and 16 lots, and we haven't gotten a world from an expansion pack this small since Get to Work came out, which was the first expansion pack for The Sims, and that obviously came with Magnolia Promenade. That had only four lots. But, you know, 
to get a world this small with an expansion pack this big was really a bit of a letdown for me. I was expecting a bit more of a bigger world, a bit more space to build. And that's not to say that I hate the world or anything, or that I thought they should have done it better, since I know that there are so many things that we aren't privy to. We, we aren't privy to you know all of the reasons why they did what they did, or you know, all of the technical stuff that kind of forced them to not do it, or that they had to work around, or anything like that. We don't get to see all of those behind the scenes you know, decisions and obstacles that they might face or stuff. But for me, I don't hate the world. I think it is the most detailed world that we have gotten so far in any Sims pack. And that's just from what I've seen from the early access footage from, you know, the game changes that went to Sims Camp. I obviously haven't had my ha gotten my hands on the world just yet. But yeah, so just from that footage, it looks like the most detailed world we've ever gotten. So I'm not complaining about the look of the world, just that I kind of feel like it's sort of a missed opportunity in a sense, or yeah, that's basically how, the best way I can put it. I'm kind of disappointed that it seems like a bit of a missed opportunity since we don't have a world like this in The Sims, where obviously with Newcrest, you know, that which was a free world that we got, it's very similar to Willow Creek. So we have Willow Creek and we have Newcrest that are very similar, but you know Del Sol Valley is kind of a completely different, a completely different world basically, a completely different vibe that the world has. And to see that there are only six residential lots is kind of disappointing, since as a builder, and I'm talking mostly about a builder's perspective right now. More, I'm not really talking about the gameplay perspective since I'm sure that when you look at the pack as a whole and you take into account, you know, the gameplay features and all of that that comes with the pack, it is probably one of the biggest and most detailed packs in oh, like overall that we've ever gotten. But I'm talking mostly about a builder's perspective. And I know that there are some awesome objects and stuff in the pack, but... Yeah, talking from a builder's perspective, I would have loved to have some more lots. I, that's basically my point. I would have loved to have more lots that I could build up that I don't, so that I don't have to build on the same six lots over and over again. Which I don't know. I'm not going to complain about that since I mean I already built. You know, everyone has their favorite lots that they tend to build on. But yeah, I would just have loved some more, especially. In the lower class neighborhood, the fact that we only have three lots in Mirage Park is, you know, really kind of annoying to me since, yeah, you're obviously going to have a lot more Sims that are just starting out than you will have be, you know, super famous. So to have just three lots in the Pinnacles, the super fancy neighborhood, kind of makes sense since not all Sims will actually make it and make all of that money, but. To have just three neighborhoods in the lower class area is really disappointing. And, you know, even if we did have to have just three there, I would have loved to see maybe like an intermediate neighborhood, you know, some, some way, somewhere half point between the Pinnacles and Mirage Park where your more middle class sims would live. Or maybe if you just had normal families, maybe some, some of the people in the household might be famous, but... They're not super famous, so they're just living in a normal family home or something like that. That would have been really nice. But obviously, we aren't getting that, so that is kind of disappointing. But overall, I think I think people tend to forget to look at the pack as not just the world. I saw a lot of people complaining about the fact that, you know, we're getting a smaller world with this expansion pack. Why is the pack the same price as regular expansion packs? And, you know, if you think like that, you have to remember to take into account the fact that an expansion pack isn't just a world. You're not just paying for the world that you're getting. You're actually paying for gameplay features and build and buy objects and create some objects and all of those other things that you're getting with the world. And that's, I think, for this pack, they might have prioritized 
you know, gameplay features and items and objects and stuff a bit more over the world. I'm not really sure about that, I could be totally wrong, but I know some Guru Kate said that a reason why they had to make this world smaller is they have to take into account performance issues, you know, the more objects and lots you add into the game, the more laggier it will become, which is one of the main things that happened with The Sims 3. There just ended up being way too much stuff in a world and that made the game lag. Now, I, t I get that to a point. I do get that, you know, they had to limit the amount of lots that they had and stuff like that. I know a lot of people have said that, oh, but then they shouldn't have made the world this decorative. They should have taken out some of the more decorative aspects of the world and given us maybe three more lots at the very least. I mean, that would have made a huge difference already. But as I said, there are other things that Simguru Kate did mention that there are other things besides just the performance, you know, the performance aspect that they had to look at. Since a lot of people said that wasn't an excuse, they, there are things that they could have done that didn't involve having to sacrifice the lot sizes or the amount of lots. And to an extent I do agree, but like Kate said, there are things that she can't really explain to us as the players. She, you know, either she does, she can't explain it since she's not a developer herself, she doesn't do the coding or stuff like that. Either she couldn't explain it right or there are things that I'm assuming she just can't explain to us. She's not allowed to explain to us. I mean obviously it is a company and there are certain things that they can't share with us. So I know that the Sim Gurus would never intentionally do something that would make us as the players unhappy as the simming community. They would never do anything that would you know, intentionally make us unhappy and I do think that they did their best with this pack. They did the best with what they had and what they had to work with and you know, just from what I've seen from their early access, um, access videos and from the streams and stuff, this is going to be an absolutely amazing pack and I can't wait to get my hands on it. So yeah, that's basically my thoughts on Del Sol Valley. If you guys have any other points that I might have missed or you know, any other opinions, definitely leave those in the comments. I would love to talk about that with you guys a bit more, but I don't want this video to be too stupidly long. So, yeah. I, yeah, like I said, if you guys have any comments or, you know, suggestions for videos or, you know, any, you know, ideas about the pack or, you know, like I said, comments about the pack or opinions or whatever, leave those in the comments and I will love, get, I will love getting back to you guys in the comments and talking with you and stuff. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this really rambly video. I know this isn't something that I tend to do on my channel. I don't normally do like thoughts videos or stuff like that. But I hope you guys enjoyed this nonetheless. If you would like to see more of these, give this video a like. And maybe tell me in the comments what you'd like to hear my opinion about in the future. Or some, whatever, something like that. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And that you're all having an awesome day and I will talk to you all in my next video. Bye everyone.